Hello everyone, and welcome to my review for Record of Ragnarok, episode 2. I was given warning before watching this episode. I, I shared my review for episode 1 on the Shumatsu server, and someone said, Hey, just so you know, episode 2 is arguably the worst. It's shit. It sucks. Just letting you know ahead of time. And I'm like, alright, well shit. Uh, I guess I better prepare for the worst. And then I watched it, and honestly, if this is as bad as it gets, I don't know if it is. If this is as bad as it gets, I think we're in the clear. Because it's not great, uh, I don't even know if I'd go so far as to say is it's good, it's just kind of meh. If the lowest point of the show is meh, then I think we're fine, okay? Um, I've, I've read some of your comments from the episode 1 review, you guys need to calm the fuck down, okay? Please calm your tits, it is not that bad, okay? There is a massive gap between Berserk 2016 and this anime, alright? We, uh, we are a little spoiled by some of the fucking amazing anime adaptations that have come out lately. That we have to remember that there are a lot of just kind of average anime adaptations. And so far it seems like this one's just average. I mean, better than getting a shit adaptation, right? So... It's really not as bad as you guys are saying it is. You need to calm down a little bit. Um, now, let's let's get into talking about the episode itself in a little bit more detail. This episode covers Thor and Lugu's backstories, as well as starts to get into the explanation for the Valkyries. Um, it's funny. I think yesterday I was imagining, hmm, I wonder if they're going to change up the animation style for Thor's backstory. It was weirdly just Thor's backstory I was thinking about, um, for some reason. Like, it's some sort of ancient tale from history being recollected. I imagine they're going to put some kind of color filter over it. They're going to make it all black and white, or it's just going to be uh, kind of tan like it's on parchment. And that ended up being exactly what they did. But they also... It's not quite slideshow, but there was much less animation. It was like one frame a second, because it's it's this tale, it's a flashback. It's someone explaining what happened. So, I knew, I, I had this feeling that they were going to do it, and it's meh. Like, it's not, meh. it's not anything great. Um, yeah. At least Lubu's backstory got a bit more animation. They still had some of the slideshowy stuff. Um, we actually got to see him break that bear's neck. That was actually pretty decently animated. Um, when that was coming up, I remembered that it happened, and I'm like, are they actually going to show it, or are they just going to, like, show the bear lunging at him and then the bear with its neck snapped on the ground? No, they actually show him doing the neck breaking. Um, so that was good. Um... Most of the animation in this episode is just kind of okay. Um, when when it's not just slideshow or the the one frame per second thing from Thor's backstory, it's usually pretty okay, I guess. Nothing amazing, nothing particularly good, just kind of serviceable. Um, there were a few good points as usual, but for the most part, nothing nothing really to write home about. Um, I have an issue with the way Netflix is doing subtitles for this, because the uh, name cards and such are still in kanji, and they're translated for like half a second before the character being shown starts talking, and sometimes they start talking before the name card is shown, so they don't translate the name card. They just show the dialogue subtitles. So fortunately for me, I remember what most of these characters' names are, because I've read the manga. But for a new person, they have no fucking idea what the names of most of Lu Bu's companions are. They don't know what Forsetti's name is. Um, that seems like a little bit of a problem. Literally not being able to read what a character's name is. Especially for some of them where they're not talking to another character and their name isn't said. Um, you're going to have a bunch of, for the audience's sake nameless side characters, um, which is, uh, not great. I think that's a little bit of an oversight on Netflix's part. I mean, I guess I could watch the dub, and then they would have that translated without the subtitles, but I don't feel like watching the dub. Um, maybe if the dub is really good, I'll watch it later, but I plan on watching this in subs for my first watch through, at least. 
um, assuming I don't hate it so much that I never want to rewatch it, which I'm kind of doubting. Another thing is that the pacing feels kind of slow for this episode. Like, not really much happens in the fight itself. But if I recall correctly, um, that's that's pretty accurate to the manga. The, the pacing at the start of Thor vs. Lubu is pretty slow. Not great. Because um, you pretty much just have back-to-back -back Thor and Lubu's backstories with not really that much in between. Uh, so I guess they accurately adapted the not great pacing for this part of the fight. Um, of course, I think next episode is when we should start getting more into the fight itself. Um, and if just the backstory part is the worst part, um, I'm not super concerned. Um, where I mostly want really good animation is in the fights themselves. So if they're going to cut corners with some of the backstories, not all of them, um, or like doing CGI for the Chinese army, doing drums in the audience, like whatever, whatever, I don't give a shit. Dedicate more of your manpower and your budget to the actual fights themselves. Uh, so we have yet to see exactly how those are going to look. Um, so I guess we'll find out in the next episode. Not really much else to say about the voice acting. Pretty much still have all the same characters we had in the last episode. We did get to hear more of Lubu and Thor talking, and I'm pretty pleased with their, uh, their voice acting choices. For Lubu, when he initially spoke, I was a little skeptical. I was kind of like, nah, I don't know. Um, but after hearing him talk some more during the episode, you know, I'd say it's pretty, pretty good choice. And I think they made a good choice with Thor as well. Um, I'm glad Thor doesn't have like a really gruff voice like Lubu does. Because, you know, with, with the, the luscious long hair and the smooth looking face, uh, you would imagine that Thor has kind of a, a softer voice. Um, and they got someone who has that. So that's pretty good. Uh, pretty pleased with that. And not really much else to say about the soundtrack either. Once again, most of it really not that remarkable. Um, though, I did really like the OST that played when Brynhild was talking to the other Valkyries. That was pretty good. I think that's the first OST that's played where I'm like, hey, this is, this is pretty fucking good. Um, so, yeah, kind of a short episode. Well, not short. Slow episode. Not really that much to talk about. Uh, we are going to be really getting into the action in the next episode, so I'm quite looking forward to that. Um, I hope you guys are too. I don't know. Maybe you're not. I don't know. I, I don't feel like most of you guys are particularly pleased with this. Um, but once again, I think you guys need to like calm down a little bit. I think some of you had a little too high of expectations for this anime. So uh, maybe just have a little bit more of an open mind. And, uh, well, I guess I'll find out what happens in the next episode, uh, assuming you guys haven't already watched the whole thing by now. So with that, that's all I have to say for Record of Ragnarok Episode 2. If you enjoyed, please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and click that notification bell so you don't miss any of my uploads. I do Record of Ragnarok chapter reviews every month, and I'm going to be churning out a few of these anime episode reviews every day until I finish. Uh, so you should subscribe so you don't miss any of them. If you enjoy other series such as Jujutsu Kaisen and Kengen Omega, I do videos in those series as well. Uh, I also have a backup channel because I have two strikes on this one. So you should go and subscribe to that one if you enjoy my videos just in case anything happens to this channel. Since it's the end of the video, it's time to give a shout out to my wonderful patrons, Archibear, CJ2K, Fuse, Neo, Dijon Redden, Anthony Chavez, Honey Mustard, Zach Rowitz, K-God, Chris Redfield, Scratch23, Moonshadow935, Rat, and Ryzen 4K. Thank you all very much for supporting me on Patreon. I greatly appreciate it. And if you too want to get a shout out at the end of videos or access to some reviews for The Boxer and solo leveling, you can always become a patron as well. There's a link to my Patreon down in the description. And of course, if you enjoy discussing Record of Ragnarok with other people, or you just enjoy the content I produce on this channel, I highly suggest you check out my Discord server. I've linked that down in the description. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys around. Take care.